Hi, this is Caitlin Russell with Russell Nutrition, and you're watching Go Terran TV. Hey everybody, welcome to Go Terran TV today. It's Taryn the Traveling Trainer out of Atlanta, Georgia. It's episode number 468. And uh, the last time you saw the registered dietitian nutritionist, Caitlin Russell, she was here on Go Terran TV episode 367. And we're welcoming back on today here again. And uh, Caitlin, how are you doing today? I'm great, Taryn. It's good to be back. Good to have you back on, and again, uh, it's been a while. We had you uh, on, and uh, of course, I saw you a couple of weeks ago at the Family Life Center with uh, your beautiful daughters. They were really cute, so it's the first time I got to see them in person. Remind me, please, uh, what were their names? Uh, Eva is 10, and Julia is 7. Eva and Julia. we got to say hi to them if they're watching, So, uh, which I'm sure they are, and uh, <laughs> there's Mommy <laughs> waving back to them. So, uh, Caitlin, uh, why don't we start with this first? I wanted to ask you, uh, for the benefit of... Um, those who didn't get to watch uh, that last episode with us, if this is the first time that they're uh, meeting you for the first time, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and uh, what you're doing here in the greater Atlanta area, please? Sure. Um, Taryn, I grew up in Snowville, Georgia, and uh, went to college in Virginia, got a degree in French, came back to Atlanta, and then went to Japan for a couple years, and came home and really got serious about finding a career. Um, after teaching English in Japan, which is a great career, but not one that I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. Really went after pursuing my passion in nutrition. Um, after working for a few years in corporate America uh, in a job that was great, but it, again, wasn't my passion. So that's when I really got serious about um, pursuing what it is that I love, and that is learning all about health and uh, healthy eating, how to make it fun and sustainable. Uh, so I got my master's in nutrition at Georgia State, got my master's in nutrition, and then I went to Emory and did my dietetic internship at Emory University Hospitals. And now I'm in private practice in Atlanta. I work remotely or virtually on the phone with clients um, in Atlanta and really um, all over the world um, coaching people. I'm licensed in the state of Georgia, so I can actually uh, offer medical nutrition therapy to clients in Atlanta or in Georgia, um, but I'm also a trained health coach, so I think a lot of us kind of know what to do for uh, being healthy. Uh, you can go to any bookstore and pick a book off the shelf for how to eat healthfully, how to exercise, uh, you know, go see a trainer. But, you know, it's the habit change um, that I think is, is really, you know, what helps me with my clients the most. Because, you know, when someone comes to me, I really want to help them um, achieve whatever goal it is that they have for themselves. So that's where the health coach training came into, uh, into being. And I completed that a couple of years ago. Um, so it just takes a whole element, new element to, adds a whole new element to my practice. And so my niche is adult weight loss. Um, I'm also specialized in food sensitivity testing and how to incorporate, um, you know, a protocol based on uh, what people get tested for with food sensitivity. Um, if they're sensitive to certain foods, I help them go through, you know, figure out what to avoid, what to eat, how to make it easy, um, and hopefully get to a point in their diet where they're eating kind of a regular diet. But um, people come to see me for things like, uh, chronic migraines, uh, fibromyalgia, and uh, IBS, and the food sensitivity uh, testing really helps uh, with many conditions, but those are the three main ones. So I'm, I'm in addition to the weight loss, I'm also uh, getting into the food sensitivity testing as well. Very good, Caitlin. Excellent. And uh, let me ask you this, because I had a list, and, and again, for the folks out there, we're going to get the website uh, from Caitlin, too, and her contact information towards the end of the interview. But um, this is some of the uh, questions I had. Can you walk us through some of your services that are available for the people if they don't know about Russell Nutrition yet? Yeah, sure. So um, most clients come to me uh, wanting to either lose weight or eat healthier, or um, you know, change habits, um, get gain more energy. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is tailor my my 
session with the clients around, you know, them and mm -hmm. habits and what they're aiming for and really kind of get at the motivating factors for, you know, why it is that they want to change. Is it their doctor that's telling them they need to, you know, get a handle on their uh, blood sugar or cholesterol or they need to lose weight to take mm -hmm. points? Um, so really, my sessions are personalized uh, for each client. They're they're not all alike. I mean, there's not a template that I really follow. I have an, a general outline, mm -hmm. but that's where, uh, you know, the differences come out when we start talking and, and seeing what people are motivated to do and what they want to change. So I offer sessions. Um, it's a package. Uh, because just like when you're learning to play golf or something like that, you don't just go and take one lesson to learn how to play golf. So mm -hmm. you have it. So I offer session packages. Um, you know, you can do three sessions at the minimum. Um, I've got people that have seen me for a couple of years now. Um, and so the packages, you know, it's, it's an incentive to get them to come back because that's how the real habit change happens. Um, so those are general sessions. They kind of come at me for whatever reason, uh, come to me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. They'll offer uh, some group programs. Um, they're usually, they're seasonal. So I offer something in the fall and in the spring and it's online. Okay. And they're just basically clean eating challenges, uh, ways to help people kind of kick sugar cravings to the, to the curb. Um, and I also do uh, live calls in the midst of those challenges. They're 21 days or 30 days at a time. And, um, and then I also am offering the food sensitivity testing. So say somebody, they already eat pretty healthy, they exercise, but they still have a, a symptom or a chronic condition that they're just, they, they're not getting relief from uh, through medication or they want to get off of medication. So that's where the food sensitivity testing. And I got into that because I was seeing clients and they were doing what we had outlined and what they said they were going to do, but they still weren't getting better. And so I found that the food sensitivity testing really makes a difference for some people because they were eating kind of things that were inflammatory because mm -hmm. the whole activities, it's a it's different than a food allergy. Okay. Uh, allergies are, um, you want to make sure you avoid the foods you're allergic to, but with food sensitivities, um, those are different. They're, they just lead to a chronic underlying inflammation, uh, and that can affect, affect you wherever blood flows in your body, basically, so from your head to your toes. Um, so that's why I got into that, and it's, it's been amazing um, the, you know, the results that people are achieving uh, from you know, the ones that have, have gone on to get food sensitivity testing. Not everyone needs it, but it's just a nice thing to have. And to be able to offer that kind of functional nutrition aspect uh, to my practice. Um, and then in addition to that, it's just uh, coaching. So mm. one is, like I said, they know what to do, but they just don't know what to do. Or I'm sorry, they know what to do. They're just not doing it. Mm -hmm. it comes into play. So um, does that answer your question? No, oh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And I had another uh, follow-up question, too. Um, we're coming into the springtime now, and I was going to ask you um, a few general uh, questions and suggestions and tips here for people. Um, for example, spring break uh, is upon us. For some people, they're out right now. Some people's spring breaks are a week or ahead or before, give or take. But what would be some good um, suggestions or tips or ideas that you might have for people on the go or traveling and if they're going out of town like and trying to avoid those fast food restaurants? What's a better, healthier way and option for them to eat uh, better? Just generally speaking? Yeah, great question. So yeah, we are getting closer to summer. And so people are really thinking about, ooh, what do I want to, how do I want to look and feel this summer, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, shorts. So um, as people are traveling, I mean, what I do is, you know, you've got to plan ahead. Uh -huh. That is when you're going to have the most success. And that's what I try to help my clients with is setting themselves up for inevitable success you know mm. it's just inevitable that you're going to make the healthier choice that's in alignment with who you are and who you want to become so um, if that's packing a cooler usually it involves you know preparing food ahead of time um, which isn't always possible but I think it's more possible than people want to admit mm. uh, 
cooler with simple things that, um, you know, are portable. So I'm a huge fan of, you know, making whatever you're going to have, whether it's a full meal that you sit down and have on a plate, mm -hmm. you know, what's not as ideal, but I know I sometimes have to eat in the car or eat on the run when, when schedule is, is kind of crazy. Whenever you're eating is to make it what I call a magic plate or a magic meal. And that means you're going to incorporate uh, protein, fat, and fiber, um, protein, fat, and carbohydrates that contain fiber. So we're talking about, you know, a hard boiled egg with some um, celery sticks and some peanut butter. Um, you know, you've got all the food groups there or not all the food groups, but you've got all the ma major macronutrients represented and, um, you know, it's easily portable. Um, fresh fruit and vegetables are always important. I, I think especially when you travel because they're full of water, mm -hmm. super important to stay hydrated. Uh, which I think a lot of us can get dehydrated when we travel. We don't drink as much because you don't want to have to go to the bathroom as often uh, and stop the car if you're driving. So uh, you just want to get where you're going. So I think my biggest tip would be to make you know your meals and your snacks, make it that magic plate where you've got the protein, the fat, and the, the carbohydrate with fiber uh, represented. And like I said, a lot of time it just it takes preparation ahead of time. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of ideas on Pinterest or Google healthy on the go snacks. Um, you know, you can find something that would appeal to you. Not everybody likes hard boiled eggs. So, you know, maybe it's finding a bar. Um, I really like kind bars. They're pretty. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we're on the road and we're traveling, we can tend to lose sight of eating healthy. We just kind of throw it out the window for that time. Um, but I think you can still stay he pretty healthy even when you're traveling. Um, it's scoping out, you know, even if you're eating out of a, uh, you know, having to eat out of somewhere, you know, like gas station store, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them are now carrying healthier options, you know, whether it's a wrap with a lot of lettuce um, and some protein in there, you know, that's, that's a good choice too. So it's, it's planning ahead though, I think is key. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. Let me ask you this. Um, what are your thoughts on some of the, quote, fad diets that are out there now? You know, you see your Paleolithic diets, HCG, the ones on TV like Nutrisystem and uh, all the others. What's, just generally speaking, like, what are your thoughts on all those that are just heavily promoted all the time and pushed now? Yeah, great question. I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so fad diets are, are really just that. Um, they're a fad and they're going to, you know, be really popular for a while and then they tend to kind of go away. Mm -hmm. What I think about, like paleo is huge and you see it, you know, you even see it in Whole Foods now where they have a paleo section of the, of the salad bar, their prepared food area. I think what I, what I like about paleo is its focus on eating whole, real, fresh foods. Um, not, you know, processed, you know, a ton of processed foods and chemicals, and it's pretty low sugar, which I do like. Um, I think people can get carried away though with the name and the, you know, I think most, if you're following paleo, then you don't have dairy and there's certain things that you just don't have. Um, I, I, I tend to just, if, if somebody wants to follow the paleo diet or they want to be a, a vegetarian or a vegan, you know, I just ask them, how do you feel when you're on that, when you're eating that way? If you feel good, then great. That's your diet. That's the way you feel best. Mm -hmm. it just happens to be called in mainstream media, paleo or whatever, you know, it is. Um, I, I think there are, there are pros and cons to probably all the, I mean, there's hundreds of diet theories out there, um, you know, not eating anything white. Uh, not eating, you know, eating only red foods or only green foods or, you know, only foods between uh, sunrise and sunset. I mean, it's, it's there's so many. Um, and I think what we can do is get caught up in that. And if, well, if I'm not eating pure whatever, then I fail. And I think, you know, we need to remember that, um, you know, the intention, I think, for a lot of these diets is just to kind of help us feel better. Um, but I think we, we lose sight of the fact that, you know, 
we're human and that we're going to, you know, we're going to want a glass of wine sometimes. We might want some chocolate sometimes. And if you're following something that's saying, you know, that's that's forbidden or it's bad to have that, then I think that's where we can kind of get into the what I don't like about fad diets. Mm-hmm. Myself, I mean, I'm I eat, you know, a lot of vegetables, but I'm not a vegetarian. You know, I have meat or protein, but it's more like a condiment. Mm. It's, you know, I'll have more vegetables and I'll have, you know, healthy fats like avocados and olive oil and, you know, nuts and seeds and coconut oil and things like that. Um, but I just, you know, I think if there's one change I could, you know, offer to people to make is just to eat more vegetables. <laughs> I mean, it's really not hard. Um, and so you see, and you see that with a lot of the fad diets is, you know, they're really focused on fresh fruits and vegetables. So, mm. Yeah, that's very good advice. I like that. Okay, very good, Caitlin. Let me ask you another question, too, because um, you would know as a parent of uh, two girls, you know, what's your impression on the schools? Uh, how are the kids' the eating habits and their options availability for food in the schools right now? Is that something that's a concern of yours? It is. Um, mm-hmm. I think the healthy options are there, but it may not be exactly what somebody would serve at home. So I think that's what, you know, I hear a lot of people, they complain about what's being offered. Um, so you got to understand that they're, you know, they're having to feed a lot of, a lot of kids at once and mm-hmm. they're out on a budget and um, they have certain guidelines that the government mandates, you know, for public schools, especially that they have to offer certain things um, with each meal or else they don't get the funding that they need to offer the foods. So, but I do know that parental involvement plays a huge role in uh, food nutrition or school nutrition. So I see the parents that can be involved and I know, you know, a lot of parents work, so they say, well, I can't be that involved. Well, it doesn't have to be something where you're there in person. Um, I think people can really, you can go once to see what it's like, at least in, in the cafeteria and see kind of what is offered um, and maybe, um, Two things. One is to talk with your child about, you know, okay, they offer chocolate milk. Is this, you know, is, is that a, you know, a big, are you a big stickler? I was, I'm, I'm a big stickler in my family about sugar. And it's not that we don't have it. It's just that we, we, you know, we save it and we, we make it something that's an occasional treat. It's not an every day or an every meal kind of thing. Um, but, you know, help the child understand that, you know, they can make healthy choices and still have a good, a good lunch based on what's available. Um, you can always supplement it at home. If you feel like they're only eating certain things, then, um, then that might be something that you need to do when they get home is know that, you know, I need to make sure that they get some fresh carrots with some ranch dressing or some peanut butter, you know, like that when they get home. Um, the other thing, you know, if you do work and you're concerned about your child's nutrition is to communicate that with, um, the principal or whoever's in charge of food service at the school. Um, I think, you know, you don't have to do it in a confrontational way because that never, um, never seems to go very well, but you can offer suggestions. Um, I have, you know, a, a sheet, two page sheet that I actually typed up with, um, for each teacher at my children's school when they were at a, a school before where they are now, um, because, the teachers were really concerned about all of the sweets and treats that were getting offered in class. And so, um, you know, the snacks, they were having communal snacks where one child would bring in a snack every day for everyone in the class. And that would rotate through, you know, a different child every day. And some of the snacks that were brought in were very surprising. <laughs> some <laughs> as, uh, you know, they were like, is this a birthday party or is this just a snack? And, mm. And so we, it just came up with, you know, an outline and it's the same as the magic plate, you know, making sure that the snack has for snacks, you know, at least two of the, of the three macronutrients is just have a protein and a fat or a protein and some fiber, you know, so strawberries and some cheese, things like that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, but I mean, to answer your questions about school nutrition, you know, it's a, it's a whole ball of wax that, you know, people are very um, passionate about it. And I think, um, there's always room for improvement, but um, I think education and, you know, it starts at home and so that your kids are empowered to make the right choices when they're not with you because they're not going to be with you all the time. Uh, I think 
talking to kids about nutrition, you can never start too young for that. Yeah. Perfect, Caitlin. Very good. Well, I enjoyed the uh, interview with you, like always. Very sound, good uh, you know, information. Now let's do the important stuff here. Can you plug the website? How can people find out about Russell Nutrition and uh, your social media as well, please? Sure. My website is russellnutrition.com. That's R-U-S-S-E-L-L nutrition.com. And I am on Facebook and Instagram. Um, those are and Twitter and those are all linked from my website. So the easiest thing is to probably just go to my website and then you can get plugged into whatever media outlet you like um, from there. But I'm on Pinterest and Instagram. I really like Instagram because it's it's kind of fun to see, you know, what picture I can post to kind of motivate someone to make something healthy because my, most of my posts are food related and to make it easy um, and show that eating healthy doesn't have to be expensive. So, yeah. Perfect, Caitlin. Well, again, great stuff. Uh, very good. I'm so glad we got to connect again here. Uh, thank you so much for your time again and appreciate you being here. And uh, for the folks watching out there, Caitlin, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Aaron, thank you. All right, everybody, there you have it. Caitlin Russell of Russell Nutrition. You saw her contact information right there. I urge you to check her out and make sure that you subscribe to her newsletter. She's got a free ebook on there, so make sure to check that out. There's blogs, there's recipes. You want to go to russellnutrition.com right now, folks. And if you contact Caitlin, I want you to tell her you saw her here right on GoTerran TV. And Caitlin, again, thank you so much for your time. You're amazing. And everybody else out there, if you want to know more about her via GoTerran, then you could go back to the website link at the bottom of your screen right there, www.gotaren.tv. Check out back in September of 2015, we had her on episode 367, and you can watch that again. And uh, going on in the future, if you ever want to check out Caitlin Russell back on GoTaren TV, we're going to get her scheduled for another video blog interview. And uh, make sure you don't miss any of those. And the ways that you could do that is by liking GoTaren on Facebook, subscribing GoTaren on YouTube, and following GoTaren on Twitter. So, again, folks, that'll wrap up today's video blog with Caitlin Russell. Caitlin, if you're watching, again, thank you so much for your time. Let's definitely have you back on here in the very near future. Everyone else out there, enjoy the rest of your day. This is Taryn, the Traveling Trainer, signing off right now. I'm the master of the personal training universe, and I'd like to tell each and every one of you out there that it's your time, it's your investment, it's your life. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video blog, everyone. Bye-bye.